So if we, if, if, if we can ever do anything with those little ghosties, then uh, we'll come back here. All right, so that's a red door. Let's see if it opens up silver doors as well. I don't remember seeing a symbol on it, so... Yep, red doors only. Figured as much. Alright. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So many red doors to go back to. I don't think I could go back to the original starting town. Hoto. Yeah, that was that... That was that, uh... I could get there. I can get there. Well, let's first let's go here because I know there's one here too. Insula Australis. The thing about these doors is they're only going to be useful at this time, unless they're like mini metals or stat items or something like that. All of the items that you get that are like weapons and armor, they're going to be good for this point of the game only. So if you if you don't pick them up now, you're just going to get them later and they're going to be garbage. Unless, unless the red doors are later on in the story, which at this point we're, I'm going to find way less red doors because there might as well not even be a red door at this point later on in the story since I already have the key and it's a story story given item <clears throat> so go, not going back for these items it effectively renders them useless plus I like uh, the exploration Crystal Vey thank you for two months resub thank you to experience for running them over. Completely no reason to do it. Cobblestone falls this way. It might be blocked off, it's possible. Cause this is Heliodor, so. The Switch version is the only one that has an orchestrated OST. The other versions, the PC and PS4, have a synth synthesized OST. I highly recommend the Switch version over any other version anyway, just because it also has like a ton of extra content. And when I mean a ton of extra content, I mean a ridiculous amount of extra content, as well as quality of life changes and just, oh my God, it's just so much better. I can't actually loot that, not that I care, it's like iron ore. 
You can mod the PC version for an or orchestrated OST, but you have to mod it. It's not, it's not uh, like a DLC or anything like that. You're modding it. Why isn't it letting me? Oh, I'm pressing the wrong button. That's why. <laughs> I could go back to Heliodor. It's worth a shot. Because I'm pretty sure there are red doors in Heliodor. I mean, it's called he Heliodor. Of course there's red doors. But yeah, there's, there, the thing is, is that like, you're gonna get so much quality of life improvement, even if they didn't have the orchestrated version of the OST in this game, it would still be light years beyond the PS4 and PC versions, just in quality of life and content alone. Moody Robot with the 42 months. What's up, Moody? Thanks for 42 months, dude. 42 months. Red door. All right, we got that. This is first town by river. Delete. Whis restor restorative. Ha 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 ha! Restorative, I get it. Slowly but surely restores the HPs in combat. What's the defense though? I only have a spot for it. And it's just not... Like, if I need something more defensive, if I get to a point where I need something defensive, then I'll pop that on, but it's gonna be niche. How did I turn in... How did I turn into a pretty lady? What? <laughs> what? You mean like by pressing R and L? I did not mean to do that. Multi bash. Can the four quick medium strength blows made it random? Who knows where they might land? Yeah. Oh, that's where the silver stuff. Nah. Wondering if I should get this in game. I've been seriously getting into JRPGs, and this one has been on my radar for a while. P.S. I never played a Dragon Quest game before. Hard question to answer. Uh, it's a great game, fantastic game even, but it really depends on your taste preferences and things like that. DQ games tend to be a little bit more niche for the Western audience, and you're gonna miss out on a lot of like uh, sort of DQisms by playing this one as your first DQ game. If you're into the more classic style of RPG, you can definitely get into the older ones first. But if you don't like the old, old style of uh, DQ games, I would recommend probably 8 as your first DQ game and then play this one afterwards. Or try to get into the other ones.
So which, ver which versions of Final Fantasy 6, 7, and 8 and 10 did you play? Mostly 6, 7, and 8. Looks like I can get into the LA door. Maybe now I can zoom here. So it seems like you've had some experience with some of the more retro style. Eight has to be the best of all. I think this one's better than eight, personally. Eight is fantastic. It's really good, but I think I, I prefer this one over eight, uh, eight quite a bit. GBA FF6? Oh man, I feel so bad for you. Because the OST for Final Fantasy VI is absolutely stellar, amazing, one of the best ever. And they really, really botched it on the GBA version. If there's an opportunity to play a SNES over GBA, always do it. Because the, the SNES sound chip is like a marvel of technology for its time, and the GBA just cannot keep up with it. It just can't. And you're always going to get a far inferior OST to every single game that's on GBA, except for FF5. It was pretty okay. West of Sonatown by Crypt. That was uh, Hoto. Hi, Kitty Cat Cavalo! Chrono Trigger is a great game. Lafia 2 is another great one. I would play Lafia 1 first. It's a little worse, but you're going to have a better time with Lafia 2. Uh, if you can play a game on SNES over any other platform, always the SNES version. Every single port of an SNES game on any other part, uh, like platform is just plain worse. The SNES version is versions are always better every single time. SNES was was a stellar platform, stellar console that that just can't be beat. Like playing the original SNES version is always better. To focus on other games, yeah, I know the feeling. I know the feeling. Doom doom. Da -da 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 -da. There's a lot of RPGs out there, tons of them. I can give you a list longer than you, you could you could deal with. Uh, being an RPG fan my entire life, I've played so many of them. Some of the so I got a question: Are you do you live in the states? Or are you are you natural born U.S.? Because there's a game called Earthbound. That's one of the best RPGs ever made. And if you're not, if you don't kind of understand the nuances of English language, Earthbound can be a little bit hard to understand its humor and, and how well it's made. Almost everybody not US or, or native English speaker doesn't quite pick up on Earthbound humor. Canadian, yeah, Canadian works. Wow. Oh, it's a great sword. Damn. I'll see what it looks like. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Pretty basic. Yeah, I used to speedrun Earthbound and had the world record in it for a while. Earthbound is a lot more popular than you think, actually. It's, uh, it's... I hate to use the expression, but a cult classic, where it 
didn't sell well at first, but it's really picked up in, in visibility recently. Circus Desert Town, that is, uh, Waffles. I'm a little sad that you don't hit your head on things with zoom in this game, but I, I, I appreciate the quality of life. Earthbound is, is not only fantastic mechanically, but it's a marvel of localization. Back in the day, story localization and dialogue wasn't really super well done. Uh, even Final Fantasy can't compare to Earthbound's localization. It, it's phenomenal. How is this game? I think it's amazing. I think it's fantastic. It's really, really great. But part of what makes it great is it's it's kind of, uh, it's sort of nod to itself as a franchise, which might be lost on people that haven't played some of the older DQs, but by itself, it, it it's perfectly fine. Let's see, uh, desert. This is inside red door in town. Making the magic happen. Hocus Loki, Hocus Hats, Fizzle Retardant Suits. That's like fire resistance. Got some goins. All right, let's see what we can make. Can't make that. Nope. Nope. Yeah, all, all the Final Fantasies are fantastic games. I I will always recommend. Uh, I will always, always, always recommend that you play the original release of any game you're trying to get back into. But for some people, it can be a little hard to play the ultra retro style of games. Like Final Fantasy One on the NES is going to be really, really, really hard to play if you're not ready to play that ultra old game design style of game you know was the ff1 version i play i play psp but but i played the original nes and i went through all that i, I think the hold on ah, whoo, whoo. um I think the NES is a valid experience, but the PSP for Final Fantasy 1 and 2 is definitely something that can stim me of some very, very frustrating gameplay from the old 80s uh, game design. But the biggest thing, the biggest thing about of all other things is the SNES. The SNES was a marvelous console when it came to visuals and sound specifically. And any time any, any kind of port of those games occurs, it's always worse, always. The SNES was a brilliant console, and to, to play it on anything other than that is just a waste, in my opinion, on such a, a, a exceptional experience. Even when you emulate SNES, it's rough. I mean, I would recommend against emulation if you can, but who the heck has an SNES lying around except for me, right? So kind of hard to, to expect people to have any SNES to play on. Divine Designs. Seraph Acceptor, Angel Sandals. All right, let's check them out. Wow. Protection against effects that prevent one from taking one's turn. Cool, huge amounts of defense too. I want to make these. I'm on. I, I do want to make at least one of these. Yeah, the SNES sound chip was beyond anything that anybody's ever been able to emulate. You can't. You like. You just can't. Nobody's been able to emulate SNES sound. Not perfectly, anyway. There's always something missing. Um, I'm reluctant to do a heat up here because there's not a lot to to smash. And uh, the 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 hit area is so small.
Yeah, DQ5 and 6 were originally released on SNES and or the Famic Super Famicom in Japan, which never made it to the SNES. So the only the first releases of DQ5 and 6 are on DS. How does it compare to the plus three? Yep, it's a good upgrade. All right, let's make another one. Yeah, the, the, the FF5 and 6 mobile slash PC versions are, are a particularly horrible. Particularly horrible. Uh-oh. I'm not getting crits. The plus three. At least the plus two. Yeah, baby. This game is very, very, very good. Very good. It's it's exceptional. I think it's the best Dragon Quest ever made. One thing to note is none of the Dragon Quests really need to play be played in any other or any order or anything like that. But this is this is just such a fantastic job of a game. Oh yeah. Plus you get outfits. Look at this. Look at your outfits. Outfits. Wow. That's actually what the hero looks like in this game is right here. Oh, not right here. Here. <laughs> you wouldn't even know. <laughs> Been covered in a helmet for like the last eight hours of gameplay or more. DQ8 is the epitome of a classic RPG, though. You're going to get a very classic RPG experience in every single DQ game you play. Northeast of Gondolia on small island with flashing naked, creepy old wizard dudes. LOL. That's what I. That's literally what I have. <laughs> that's literally what I have written down. Northeast of, of Gondolia on small island with flashing naked, creepy old wizard dudes. LOL. With the LOL. With the LOL which is the one that I picked up on accident instead of another island that I was supposed to look at. So let's go island hunting now before I forget. So if that's that island right there, then I need to go to probably this island. Oh, Dave. Nino Kuni was amazing, yeah. Very, very good game. Combat wise, it lacked a little bit with how you evolved your creatures and stuff, but it was still fantastic. Beautiful game made by Studio Ghibli artists. Nino Kuni 2 was also very good, but only had a couple you know, uh, a couple Ghibli studio people on staff as more advisors than artists. So it has a slightly different aesthetic, but I think the combat is way better in Nino Kuni 2, personally. Much more balanced and engaging and interesting. Falcon Blade? What? I'm gonna get a Falcon Blade from my thingies, damn it. From my, uh, 
Oh, that's the, the, the attack twice one. Oh my god, I'm gonna get dual wield soon too. Dual wield fucking fucking blades. Fucking blades, I hey yeah, they're fucking blades. Oh, I, I hate air blades. Uh, falcon blades, dual wield, four attacks, baby. Rework. Honk. Hell yeah. We're definitely going to do a uh, sizzly puff puff. I think a multi bash might be good here. Wow. Whoa. Multi bash is pretty good for weapons like this where you can't get a quadra bash in. But we want a double edge bash here. <sighs> Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Oh my god, look at that! Look at that! God tier crafter over here! God tier! I might be replaying this, TK Wizard, after I beat it in the 2D mode. Oh, by the way, by the way, uh, Sisto, if you have a Switch, I, th I believe you said you do. In the Switch version of this game, you can alternate between a full 3D version of the game like this or a retro 2D. That was only originally on the 3DS Japanese only game. So I had the Bandit Blade. Not only did my attack power increase by 12, 13, but I'll now strike twice. And if I get another one from the mini metals, that'll be four attacks per turn. Cause uh, I believe I'm very close to, oh God, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do that right now. I'm very close to uh, getting dual wield on him. Just a level or two away. Yeah, the environment detail is very, very good. There's a lot of lots of nice terrain mod modifiers, not just flat areas that are really boring to look at. Agreed. All right, so I don't believe we did that southern island. I don't think we did any of these outside islands. So we have four of those islands to look at, or three more islands, and then we have that one in the middle. So if we circle around south, then we'll reach them all in a nice little loop. But unfortunately, we're going to have to fight a lot of stuff because we can't turn off encounters while on the boat. Yeah, the, the DQ1 through 3 are on Switch. They're the mobile versions of DQ1 through and 3, and I've heard mixed opinions about it. Some people say they can't stand it. Other people say it's fine. Uh, VG just played through one, and he said it was fine. And he started too earlier today, but Vazerol over here said it was just like cancer to his eyes. Another couple RPGs that you might like that are a little bit more active and engaging in combat, they're not like the classic style uh, turn-based RPG you're used to, is Xenoblade on the Wii, uh, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles on the Wii, and Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Both a couple of my absolute favorite games, but they're a much more unique style of combat. Excellent stories, great games. I haven't been to this island. No, that's right, because I said no more exploring until I get the key, which we got. Hi, Vector Graphics. Oh, I see, yeah. That, that, that tends to be the case with a lot of remakes and remasters of games, as you notice the graphical limitations more prominently. Oh, it's hammery hoods. All hammery hoods all the time. And uh, it can be a bit jarring. For sure. Xenoblade 2 good? I personally think Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is one of my favorite games of all time. It has a lot of the fan service type stuff that you would kind of be shying away from. 
but the game is just good by itself and they just kind of added that fan service as a means to try to attract uh, sales because it is a bit of a lower budget game but it's not even a low budget game it's just a little bit lower it's um 